With many years of paranormal investigating under our belt, there has been some amazing evidence collected from some amazing locations. Many of these locations have not been featured in any video from Four State Paranormal, nor do all of our investigations make it to haunting history. We are opening the vault and bringing you inside some of our most memorable investigations and telling you our story firsthand. So take a trip with us as we explore our haunted past. My name is David Glidden. I'm the founder of Four State Paranormal, the creator of Haunting History, and podcast host of the Paranormal Frequencies podcast. I started investigating in 2006, but got interested in the paranormal way earlier. It started when I was young. I'm the youngest of five boys, so as the youngest, I always got beat up and always got picked on. But the cool thing about having older brothers was that they always let me watch horror movies and uh, that really got me started. Um, you know, I was four, five, six years old watching Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, uh, Night of the Demons, and eventually they let me watch some of the uh, Faces of Death movies, which was pretty twisted now that I think about it. My family was always really open to the, the idea of aliens and ghosts and, and other cryptids. And I think that openness in the family really allowed me to, to f freely think about the uh, paranormal. When I was 16 years old, one of my brothers had passed away in a car accident. And it wasn't until maybe six, six months to a year later that I really had an encounter where I had a very vivid dream of my brother and in this dream, we talked about, you know, everything about what happened and, and how he is and, and everything. And it was so real to me that I woke up crying. Um, I'd never had a dream that's that powerful, that impactful. And I think, I think in the back of my mind, I believe that he did visit me and wanted to tell me that everything was okay, that he was okay and uh, it was okay for me to be upset. So that was something that really kind of got me thinking about the life after death aspect. Um, and then in 2000, about 2006, uh, after the movie White Noise had come out, Ghost Hunters had been out for a year or two, I think, and it kind of opened my eyes to see, you know, people were actually doing this that people were actually going out and, and checking out haunted locations and, and collecting evidence and everything. So I, I was extremely curious at that point. Watching an episode of Ghost Hunters one night at my, my friend Mike's house, uh, we decided that we wanted to go out and try this to see if there was anything really to it. Uh, Mike's fiance at the time, she told us of a cemetery in the town that she grew up in, which wasn't too far from us. And myself, Mike, his fiance, and his sister, we all jumped in the car and we went to this town, went to the cemetery. Nothing happened at the cemetery, um, so we ended up going to another cemetery in town. And as we got there, for we were there probably an hour, and uh, we were pretty much scaring ourselves. We were make, getting all jumpy about every light, every noise, every sound. I mean, it was, it was pretty funny. Um, but uh, we decided to leave, and as we're leaving, Mike asked me to stop the car because he wanted to look one more time into the cemetery. So I stopped the car, and I started digging through the center console. And as I'm digging through the center console, everybody in the car just starts freaking out. And Mike's a big guy. He's 6'4", about 250. And when he freaks out, that freaks me out because whatever can kill him can definitely kill me. And as they're freaking out, I, I jumped up and I, I hit the gas because Mike was yelling at me, David, drive, 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 drive. So we sped out of there. What they described to me was a basketball sized ball of light that was bluish in hue with a little bit of smokiness to it was actually coming towards the car. And as it was coming towards the car, that's when they freaked out and we sped off. I was mad that I didn't get to see it. Uh, so in the car we had the conversation about coming out the next night. The girls didn't want to and uh, Mike and I we decided we were going to go go back out there. 
So the next night we go back out there, and as we're out there, maybe after 30 minutes to an hour, I ended up seeing my own ball of light. Uh, it was a yellow ball of light. It was off to my left, about 20 yards, and it danced around for about you know 20 to 30 seconds, and then it collapsed on itself. And then not even two seconds later, it shows up about 40 yards off in front of us, dances around for 10 to 15 seconds, and then collapses, and then we don't see it again for the rest of the night. We had some other experiences on other trips out there, but that experience really got me thinking about what was it that we just saw. Um, from that point on, we started doing some research, and it was like a week later that I found Gene Keys online. We ended up stumbling upon a forum and some posts, and one of the posts was from Gene Keys, who was talking about a place in a town north of us and uh, I had gotten a hold of him and we decided that we were gonna meet up with him and check this place out with him. And so we did, we went up there and we had some more experiences in this house. And that just left us with more questions than answers. We just decided that later that week that you know we should probably put a team together and start investigating this stuff and really see what's going on, what are some of the explanations for what people are, are experiencing and we did, we started a team called the uh, Paranormal Investigators of Southwest Missouri. And our first order of business was to bring Gene Keys in. And Gene ended up becoming our lead investigator. Um, the group had done some really awesome things. And in 2010, uh, Gene had an experience that really shook him to the core. The, uh, the incident was actually witnessed by about seven to eight people and ever since that incident he never investigated again. Uh, shortly after Mike had made the decision that he wanted to focus on his family and he didn't really think he could focus on the family while investigating so he uh, decided to bow out graciously and uh, Mike and I were still actually Mike, Gene and I were all still friends to this day um, so there was no ill will. Um, but I didn't feel it was right to investigate without them, so I, I was about to quit. And uh, one of our guys that was in training, Jeremy Boyd, uh, talked me out of it. And uh, so I made the decision to continue. But the only way I was going to continue was to change the name, because I didn't feel it was right to investigate without those guys under that same name. So I changed the name to Four State Paranormal, and we built the team up. We brought in Barry, um, Stephen Walker and eventually John Long and uh, down the road Don Harris uh, joined us and there's been some other people uh, in between the time but that's that's pretty much the gist of it and we've been going strong you know ever since um, we've uh, we've done some really amazing things with the news newspapers we've done some uh, fundraising which has been awesome um, we just kind of done a lot of things for other people and uh, by the time we got to uh, Haunting History, we decided that there was something more that we could do. And with Haunting History, the idea behind the show was to showcase a lot of history of some of these locations, some factual history, as much as possible. And in doing so, we hoped that we could drive some people to these locations and uh, help, sus help these places sustain, uh, help keep them alive. Um, because if people don't visit them, they'll disappear and they'll be lost for future generations. Um, it's amazing how many places are literally in our backyard and nobody knows about them. And that kind of puts us up to date. Um, we've got the fourth season of Haunting History that's about to start filming and, uh, you know, my career itself um, is kind of branching out. I've gotten into filmmaking. Um, John's gotten into building and selling uh, equipment and everything. Uh, Barry Tidwell is also getting into, I guess you could say the entertainment business. He's working for uh, the local ABC station and doing some other camera work. So, I mean, we're, we've all kind of taken, taken pride in what we're doing and we're pushing it a little further in our own personal lives. So I think this has all been really good for us and it's been also really good for uh, some of these locations um, and we want to continue to to find these other locations and uh, draw some attention to them as well.
Well guys, that's pretty much the background of how I started Four State Paranormal. Uh, that's pretty much my background as far as getting into the paranormal. Um, I know a lot of people have asked me how this, ha how I've got into this and all that. And uh, so this is the first of many origin videos and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys on the next one.